الان اسمحوا لي ارحب بسعاده الدكتور احمد اليماني وحديث مهم حول الخصخصه ودورها في رفع جوده التعليم تفضل معنا السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته معلش انا حتكلم باللغه الانجليزيه اوكي okay. well it is uh, very important how I will be able to reflect my 23 years of experience in private higher education to encourage the private sectors to invest in a very promising, very, very promising area. But, and only but, from my experience, There are, of course, for a private higher education to succeed and survive, they must be self-critical and responsive to their academic assessment and administrative practices. It is very essential. It is a very promising and a very open. I know I don't probably have the whole time to be able to convince Businessmen in the community, I'm given only 10 minutes to present, to be able well, to convince you. We'll give you, you more, five minutes. Well, oh, thank you. <laughs> I need more than that. Okay. But, and I also mentioned uh, His Excellency, and uh, when he mentioned the Saudi market will be open for a private higher education, international private higher education. We are, I am for, for a 100%. However, I'm hoping the Ministry of Finance take into consideration the rules of the games should remain the same for a private, local, and international. Uh, outlines to what I'm going to be mentioning, talking about what is a privatization, what is now uh, PSU, Prince Sultan University, is a model privatization, and hopefully its experience will reflect and encourage business uh, people to invest in that area. And, uh, what is the outcome now over the years? We are now 23 years that I lived through it all. And the recommendation, what do you need to do to, of course, uh, improve or get a quality of our education? Well, it's a, a privatization. It's nothing but a, to imply the uh, a private uh, ownership from the public, gradually go to the a private. Uh, so also privatization expanded tremendously around the world. And many uh, countries, uh, public higher education no longer is dominant. And that's true. Uh, just this will show here. Today, worldwide, one in three are in private higher education. It's 30, over 30%, 33% are in private higher education. Uh, and of course, there are different types for profit, for non-profit, and public or private. Okay, what is the necessity for private higher education? Privatization is needed, really, it will establish competitions. This is absolutely. Like us, when we were established, well, 23 years ago, we were all alone in the market. But today, there are definitely numerous public and private universities. There is a challenge. So I have to keep up with the challenge. So I have, this is, will be, a, a, of course, a plus or addition to this. Another issue, increasing the efficiency, usually, in terms of, uh, okay, uh, resource allocations. It's always, when private higher education, there is always, they care about, about their programs, being able to fit the need of the marketplace, and they are utilizing their, uh, as much as possible their efficiency. Fulfilling the uh, demand for higher education for the growing population. When we were established, the uh, high school graduates, there were not even uh, uh, 200,000. And uh, there was only eight uni public universities. And it was only 45% that get admitted. So obviously, clear, there is a desperate need for a private higher education. Uh, well, of course, in addition to give the autonomy and the agile to be able to make decisions a lot faster. Uh, and also, this will contribute to the uh, very ambitious uh, uh, vision for the uh, 2030 vision of the country, which really uh, ask private institutions to inspire and, of course, empower young Saudis 
to be part of the, uh, uh, the economies. Well, quickly, this is why I would say uh, privatization in the Middle East when it started in Lebanon. There was uh, the AUB, and there is, of course, St. Joseph. And this is a, gave a model for uh, the Arab world, really. Uh, and also, now we say in the Gulf region, there's a lot now in the last 20 years, so many universities in, uh, in the uh, Gulf regions, and uh, so many of them. And, uh, but mostly they are affiliate of international universities. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, well, the first private university was, uh, uh, was a, a, uh, King Abdulaziz University. And it really was a surprise to me myself. There was, of course, free, no tuition. And of course, lasted for four years. And in 71, of course, it was taken over by the government and uh, continue now the outstanding universities. Uh, and as now, uh, as an indication, uh, the, the kingdom has spent uh, more than one-third of its budget on education. And there is a mandate now, according to the, uh, or the country's vision, is to raise the enrollment in, in, in higher private higher education from 6% to 15% within the next, what, eight years. Uh, well, now, uh, a model of a privatization, we look at it, I'm just giving an example as a PSU, Princeton University. Uh, PSU was founded in 1999 by the Real Philanthropic Society under the auspices of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz, when he was, at the time, the chairman of the board of directors of the Real Philanthropic Society for Science, and, of course, uh, the uh, idea was in dedication to the late Crown Prince Sultan ibn Abdulaziz when he came from a medical treatment abroad. Uh, but the university, of course, uh, started, and we are very pleased and proud that our university is the first private university in the kingdom. And it is really, I would say, it's really uh, changed the landscape of higher education in Saudi Arabia. As I just mentioned a while ago, back then, about what, 23 years ago, there is only, pr private higher education was unheard of in this country. Until, of course, we came along, we established private uh, education, and now there are numerous public and uh, private higher education. PSU, with the, no doubt, with the support, the relentless support of the Ministry of Higher Education back then, and today the Ministry of Education, PSU has proven the kingdom's success and value of private higher education. And PSU, over the years, uh, of course, uh, <coughs> shown its commitment in providing quality education. And this is shown by our uh, graduates and the demand of our graduates. This is just more like a s quick statistics about P P uh, PSU, where, where we and where we are now. We are now, we already graduated over 6,000 uh, students. And now our student body, it is also over 6,000. We are not competing university, public and private, in the number of students. We care about the quality. Your name is your quality. What brand do you have out there? And that is the most important matter. And we see the result of it. We are now getting the uh, fruits of that work that we have been doing. Uh, I know I don't have a lot of time. Uh, the uh, PSU's mission, well, every vision, there must be behind it. Every mission, there must be behind it a successful vision. PSU's, the essence of PSU's mission is to unlock the talent and potential of the Saudi young men and women and Im improve their employability, which is really goes back to education, your equality, your education. And this is what we really have and what we are always care about and what we focus on. Your product is, speaks for you. Well, uh, we have, how are we achieving that? We have models. We have main three models. PSU quality framework consists of three main models, which is uh, okay to, with the uh, international standards. What are those models? First thing I have, uh, PSU, academic quality models. I will go over it quickly. I know I don't have a lot of time. 
And two, we have a PSU quality professional training model. <laughs> what are we doing to the community, paying back the community that created PSU? <laughs> and three, what are the, of course, PSU quality applied research model? What are we doing in research today? We feel like we matured by now. Well, looking at the PSU uh, academic quality model, see, it's very important. You look to these, these two sides. If you look at the left-hand side, your ingredient, your input. So I need to make sure that at a quality program that meets the needs of the marketplace, I got to make sure there is a diversity in my faculty members from every school there is possible in the world, because eventually we'll go back in the teaching and learning in the classrooms. It's very important. And also my uh, student, quality student. Outstanding students are not going to come to any university that doesn't have mediocre or doesn't have a good reputation. So you have to plan and you have to give probably up to 20% of your uh, students need to be in scholarship to be able to attract the quality students. These ingredients, these ingredients, of course, you have the state of the art facilities equipped with the latest technology for your community. And these are, they will go into now applying this input through PSU three levels academic structure. This structure is very important. Three main elements. This is the key drivers. The PYP mainly focus on skills, building characters, building, of course, personality. Two, you get into the knowledge, into the, into the university level, and the hands-on training. This is one of the most important items to get the student to the real world what expected of them in the real world. So this is the link, this link is very vital. And this is process validated by our local accreditation body, which is NCAA, and the international accredited body, which is WACSB we have, we have ABIC, we have uh, H2S. So the output, this is what everybody is after, employable graduates. And we are doing very well with that, and we feel the responsibility to live up to what expected of us and the reputation that we have. Uh, through the, uh, throughout the academic journey of our students, when I'm talking about building characters, uh, of course, the students have the opportunity to have, of course, international exposure and experience. We have so many programs that, okay, I have summer programs here. We have, of course, uh, these are the universities that we send students to. As I speak to you, I have students on all these, some of these universities that are now studying a semester abroad program or a year abroad program or a semester uh, or a summer program to diversify the education horizon for PSU students. And we see we are now uh, gaining the fruits of that. These other things, extracurricular activities, I'm saying, the PYP. These are my students now in Fudan University in China, right there. This is now with, uh, uh, of course, um, uh, Durham University, the intercultural uh, communication. OK. Well, I wish I had the time. This is a very important, I think, extracurricular activities. My, our students being able to, for College of Engineering, our main, of course, uh, uh, fourth revolution uh, lab, their own car from scratch. And I lived there. I was there. And they did everything from the designing concept till they're able, from the design concept, using, of course, the fourth industrial revolution, to be able to build it, go into the industrial area, get in all this stuff and build it. If you, this, you allow, give me two minutes, you'll see what they're doing here. It's unbelievable. And it's definitely, this is, of course, in, they spend more time in these labs than they spend in the classrooms because they feel, they see something, the product they are doing. Look at them, what they're doing there, how they're excited they're doing with this thing, with the with car they're producing. And it is very, very, very important. But anyway, I have to move on. I know yes, he's looking please, at me. Victor. Uh, so I move on to the next. These are also, this is a very important model, the quality professional training model. PSU doing the extra mile to, of course, train university, Saudi university graduates that have challenges of getting jobs. They get into our academies, our programs, we have different, eight different academies that train them and guarantee their jobs. 
from an unemployed to getting a job to 24,000 and above. And I have so many examples of that. Anyway, I have to move on. Uh, okay, this is, my, this is the model that we have in the academy. We have eight different academy, and this is ECHO exactly with SDG 8. And of course, these are the companies. Before, we were doing education for employment. No, now we are doing employment for education. Com P companies coming to PSU asking for graduates. Just an example, site company, WebRo, you see, Salam, you can have all of those things now. Now, as I speak to you, you go to PSU, you see how many students that are already in this kind of program. Well, my conclusion, well, this is what, uh, it's very, our research and the things that we're doing, look at the research what we are doing today. But I guess you know, look at the, our own journal that is Scopus, now it's in that, and it's indexed in all these databases. I'm going fast. Okay, I uh, have now, for this journal, I have diversified 192 international editors in, in our journal uh, from 44 countries, from 130 universities. My conclusion, the, uh, I'm not going to say, this is privatization. This is a, a, a long list of how are we are able to be number one. We are number one in the kingdom and employability of a graduate. This is not me. This is the head of program that came to PSU and told us, you are score number one. But anyway, let me move on. Halas, I'm Thank done you, the conclusion. The sure. conclusion, to look at these letters. We get them from all different companies. They want PSU graduates. This company, let me move on. This, now, these law firms, what they have, our students. You see our consulting offices, they have our students. You have all this IT, uh, all our students. It is very, I'm not going to say profitable business, but you have to keep in mind quality before the dollar sign in front of you. Quality, quality. And Shukran. everything you will get at the end of the day if you work and focus on quality. And Shukran. thank you, and thank Shukran. you for your patience. <laughs>if you're looking at the start to the dollar sign, how much money you're going to make, you're not going to make it. If you're focusing on quality, I can guarantee you that. You can, this is recorded. I can guarantee you that you will be financially fine from an experience. But you have to have that brand. You've got to have that name. You've got to focus on your faculty, diversity in your faculty from all different backgrounds. You've got to have also different there's a diversified serum body. And you have to have partially, I would say, 20% of your students that got to be in scholarships. You got to attract the outstanding students. This is a very important. And of course, your program, they have to keep up with the demand of the marketplace. You have, I didn't get the opportunity to talk about the ecosystem. And they are winners. If I go to companies, they are very concerned to get the a proper person to do their job. So they want outstanding graduate. Us as a university, or represented by the Ministry of Education, definitely it's important to them also for private higher education to have more students to meet that mandate to go up to 15%, which is very challenging, I think. And definitely this is, will help the uh, Ministry of Education. With the Ministry of Labor, also, it is important to them to reduce their, of course, unemployment from what? Today's 11.6 with by 2030, they got to be make to, to has to go 7%. Hey, you're graduates. They must, there is the winner. I have the companies 
they care about somebody to do the job. I have the Ministry of Education. It's important to them to support the private education. I have the Ministry of Human Resources. It's important to them. So there must be there got to be incentives to the companies. And the companies, I can give the uh, students, they need to sit down together. What do you need? What skills do you need? Come on. What are the specific things that you need? And you have to adapt as an institution, as a university. This system, all the four party will be winner to really achieve that. Good. But they have to work all together. Shukran. Shukran lik, doctor. <laughs>